Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to cut out stamped images using your brother Scan and Cut SDX125. The stamp set we'll be using is called Elfie. It is a super cute new stamp set in our 2019 holiday catalog. Okay, so check this out. And if you're a Scan and Cut user, you are going to just be like, this is the stamp set I did not know I needed until now. Because when I saw this, I was like, this is just adorable. And I had to have it. So I didn't even get it on the pre-order the first time around. I got it later once I started uh, looking through the actual paper catalog. So if you like a paper catalog, this all you need to do is place any order before September 15th. And you will not just get this paper catalog. You will get a sampler of really cool things that I created and I'll show you those. At the, I'll show you one of the things that you'll get at the end of this video. But I don't want to. I just want to jump right into the tutorial. And but while I'm stamping, you can look. This is my website and the host code to use to take advantage of the holiday catalog sampler, which will include a snowman card and something else I'm making now, and who knows what else. But I'll mail out the catalog next week with whatever I've made it to that point. I don't even know what I'm going to be making and up until that point. All right, so what I have here is a piece of 12 by 12 Whisper White cardstock. We are using Memento Black ink. Why? Because it has, it's just good because I'm going to be using the blends for coloring. Okay, meet that one. Is, I have a couple of Memento Black inks. So we use this one. This one's not in a shabby of condition. Okay, so Memento Black ink because I'm using alcohol markers, which are blends. And when you use alcohol markers, then the Memento Black ink doesn't run. All right, so first things first. I want to answer a few questions in this video. And I, a question I get asked a lot is, how do you mount stamps? Okay, so I'm going to start out with one that's mounted. And for good measure, I even put the sticker on. You don't even need to put the sticker on. You can take it out of the package and mount it and use it right away. But I put the sticker on because our cling stamps have super great stickers now. So I'm going to start out with this really cool Elfie. Okay, this Elfie is a nice long Elfie and he doesn't need any special trickery to cut out because he has well-defined lines. Now notice, because the stamp pad is smaller than the stamp, I put the stamp upside down and then I stamp it. Okay, I'm just stamping anywhere you want on your Whisper White. Always stamp more than one because if you stamp more than one, you'll, have, you'll be able to make more cards easily. So I'm just going to stamp more than one. For this tutorial and we can and just to save room on your paper you could do something like this you know just to save a little bit of room so now we've stamped one of these elves okay so this one has no problems to cut out this one uh, this one I'm going to show you how to mount and this one has a couple tricks to it so let's let's uh, peel I'm going to peel him up well, actually just I would normally just scrub the stamp and clean it but I'm just going to go ahead and use my little baby wipe quick, quick cleaning <laughs> method just so I can get the stamping block uh, available for the next stamp. Okay, so I'm just using a baby wipe. Now I'm going to peel this off. These, these new cling stamps are really sticky. Okay, on both sides. I'm going to put this back in. So this, this is a good quality stamp. Stamping up makes really good, good quality stamps. And these cling stamps are no exception all right so if let's see if this one will even fit on there I'm not even sure if it'll fit on this stamping block let's let's try it okay and if not I'll get a different stamping block I want to show you from start to finish how you would take this out of the package it comes in the red rubber like this you take it off and let's see if it will fit on there I mean I'd say I say it fits on there perfectly okay this is stamping block I all right, so without even using my sticker, I can actually just mount this onto the acrylic block. So use whatever acrylic blocks you have, and you might have a real big one that holds all the stamps. You can throw this little piece away, and now you can just mount him on there, and he'll, he will cling. Okay, but I'm going to also show you how to put the sticker on it. So let's just, okay, let's just ink him up. Okay, see how there's a little bit of shine on it? That's how you know you've got it inked up. Okay, and then you just hold it down for a few seconds. Let's just put, and that's a perfect 
clear, crisp image right away. I don't want to do the next one too close to that one because, you know, I'm, I think that I have to put something else there. We'll put the next one over here. But I always do at least a couple. So we'll ink him up. And then I'm going to show you how to put the sticker on him. Only because sometimes when I do my tutorials, my viewers are left scratching their head and they ask me questions like, well, how did you get the stamp? onto the block like and, and then I go oh my gosh I thought I I thought I covered all the steps but I didn't so now I'm going to take I just cleaned it a little bit I'm going to take it off and show you now how to get that sticker on there because I saved I, I put stickers on the other ones but I saved that sticker so you have a pack of stickers like I said you don't need to use them I mean look how good my stamp was without using them but you want to use them if they're especially when you're trying to line up things so it's good to have them mounted on onto like especially when you have sentiments and you want to line up your sentiments it's good for, you know, it's good for lining up things. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to bend the sticker paper. I'm going to peel this off. Okay, and you can throw these little covers away, sticker covers away. So I'm going to throw these away, and I'm going to just lay the sticker down, and I'm going to take this, this stamp and just place it right onto the sticker. That's how I do it. I mean, I'm not sure how other people do it, Feel free to comment in the if you do it a different way. Comment in the video. I'm always like to learn new things, but that's just the way I figured out how to do it when these cling stamps came out. And then I just so now that it's perfectly centered on there, that's how I that's how I mount it. And then I peel it off and it's mounted. Okay, and it's a sticker. It's a double-sided sticker, so now it sticks even better onto the stamping block. But we've already stamped with it. I just wanted to show you that. Just extra little tips and tricks. I like to show my viewers lots of tips and tricks throughout my videos, and you just never know. Okay, so this one I'm going to do next. This is the little Elfie in a stocking. Elfie in a stocking. Okay, so now we're going to ink him up. Well, we always do a couple, so let's ink him up. Put Elfie over here. Okay, good. And put another Elfie on this over to my brayer. You know I don't have a big table, so things are always falling off my table. All right, so there we go there. And then I have to move the, the website information. I'll put that back in a minute. Okay, then we're going to get the last stamp, which is the no peeking. And we have the present as well. The present will just take a second. There's no tricks to that. So I've cleaned that off. We'll do the no peeking. I've already have the no peeking one, Elfie, uh, mounted. I didn't put the sticker on it, but he says no peeking. So this one, you can tap right onto the ink because he is small enough to fit there, to fit onto the ink pad. Okay, so no peeking. And we're going to do a few of those because there's a trick to those. There. And I want to make sure that if I do a couple, like at least one comes out so I can show you. And we'll put the presents right there. We'll put the presents up in that area. And then we can even do what's called a 12 by 6 scan instead of a 12 by 12 scan. Something that's available on your SDX but not on your CM350. Okay, present. I'm doing the little present next. And we're just stamping a couple presents in any blank areas. All right, so there we go. We have all these different things that we can cut out now. And we didn't cut out, you know, the sentiments. I'm going to be stamping the sentiments right onto my cards or right onto my and I punch those out so I do something different with the sentiments but I just cut out these these are what I call my embellishments and I cut out those with my scan and cut so now we're going to mount I can bring this back in while I get my I'm going to get my mat okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mat down this is an SDX 125 mat, kind of dirty, but I restuck it recently. If you're not sure how to restick the mat, check out my video on resticking mat. So I'm just going to place this down. And it's good to use 12 by 12 cardstock because then it's not picking up all the dirt around the outside. When you rub it, you could use a brayer. My brayer fell, but I'm going to pick it up. I'm, you could use a brayer if your ink was dry. But if I use my brayer right now on the top part, I might smear my ink because we just got done stamping it. So instead, I just kind of go like this with my fingers around. Like that. 
All right, so now for the tricks before we do the scanning. The tricks are my pencil trick, and if you take my online class at Udemy, there'll be a link to my online class in the description of this video, you will know about my pencil trick. It's whenever you have lines that are not clearly, whenever this is not a solid outline around something, you have to use a pencil trick. It's no different for this no peeking. If you want no peeking to cut out with this Elfie, you have to connect no peeking to Elfie. So you have to do something like this. And now, even now, we're not the letters are not continuous, so that isn't going to work. I need to sort of go around the letters down here. And by the way, don't use your pink eraser to erase this. I'll show you my eraser after this when I erase the marks. Okay, so that's no peeking. But if you want it to stay separate, then you wouldn't connect it. So this one will keep separate. And let's see, we'll, we'll connect this one. Oh no, that one's too light. That one's too light, it's probably not even gonna scan in. But we'll connect this one so I can show you how it works and we won't connect that one. Now the other trick for this kind of is over here, right here. You see this little ball? If you want these little, I don't know what they are, motion? Like, cause he always kicking the ball. So if you want those little motion things to be cut out, you have to kind of outline those as well. I don't know. I just mounted it. You, so you, don't, you know I haven't even cut that out yet. So we'll see how that looks. We don't know what's gonna happen. We're gonna find out. So now we're going to load the mat and then we're gonna scan it in and then we're gonna make you wait for it to cut because I'll just splice the videos together later. We will. I'm just gonna go ahead and load the mat. You're not gonna see that part because I have to tilt my camera now. So you can see all the settings. So yay, it loaded good. By the way, my machine just updated again. We're back, it is finished cutting. I'm gonna say okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and unload the mat. I'm gonna say okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to peel this piece of whisper white away. Okay, so let's peel. And okay, by the way, if you if you have a CM350 and you are just following along with the tutorial, or Scan and Cut 2, or another model where you have to set your blade depth, when I use whisper white cardstock, I use about a blade depth of four, just so you know. But because I'm using an SDX right now, it, it has the auto blade technology and I didn't need to set the blade depth. So that's just so you know. All right, now I'm gonna take my little spatula. You can take the one that came with the Scan and Cut, or you can just you know, use a larger spatula. You can bend the mat a little bit, and that's how you're gonna remove your stamped images from the mat. Fantastic job. So let's put it on something that contra contrasts. Here, I like this. I like this new glitter, red, real red glimmer paper. It's pretty cool from the holiday catalog. And it'll give you something nice to look at while I peel these off and then I show you the results. All right, so that's called Real Red. <laughs> I love, I love glitter. Real Red Glimmer Paper. And put this one back in case you want to get Elfie. I know you're gonna be like, I have to have Elfie. All right, so let's tilt the camera. Oh, I'm gonna even tell you the price of Elfie because I don't know the price of Elfie. I get a discount, but I, here we go. $22 is the retail price of Elfie. Okay, and it's and look at that high quality rubber. So there's, if you wanna get Elfie. No dies with it, you can use your scan and cut. So here's what happened when we did the no peeking, and I'm gonna show you how to erase those marks and not leave any marks. Here's the other no peeking. See how I said just, you don't have to put the no peeking on all of them because there's another way to cut it out. And I was really surprised this one even cut out because look how light the stamping was, it was, I'm surprised he cut out. All right, now this one, here's an unintended consequence because I forgot to outline the little ball and now I know that you don't even need to. But when you do outline the little ball, like with the pencil, like I did over here, which let me peel this one off, it, it did come out with little bulges on it. So I think it's better not to, I would say no, you don't even need to, to put the little outline around the ball. And, and that kind of brings me to another viewer question I get a lot. Do you, why, do you, why don't you color and then cut out? Well, if you color outside the lines, you see how I, it would, it would give little bulges like that. 
around my stamped images. So that's one of the reasons I don't color first. Plus, I don't know what I'm going to be coloring yet. I don't know what kind of, I mean, I'm not sure what I'm going to have, what projects I'll be using these selfies for. And it depends on the project and the paper I decide to use. Then I'll know which colors to color it. So I always color later. And not all stamped images cut out, so that's another reason. All right, we've had everything came off the mat and, and great success rate. I'm happy with everything. Now we're gonna now we're gonna erase for the no peeking, and we're gonna erase on that little balls there, and then we will have everything we need. And I could show you a little bit of coloring, and then I will show you my projects as I always do in my videos. The projects I created with Elfie. So. I got asked yesterday, I was doing this snowman tutorial, I was showing how to make a card and then a viewer asked me like, how, how are you choosing your color palette? Are you using a color wheel? And I said, well, I'm using Stampin' Up's experts. They've chosen the color palettes for me. I'm just trying to match up with some of the papers that they've already chosen. So I choose my colors based on coordinating colors that Stampin' Up has in the catalog. So for example, I'm gonna be using in these projects, this paper here that's in our holiday catalog and it's called let it snow designer series paper and so i just see what they what the stampin up expert said right it says hey black basic black blueberry bushel coastal cabana flirty flamingo real red shaded spruce whisper white so i just chose what the colors that they they said coordinate that's how i got real red and shaded spruce of course i didn't have coastal cabana in the blends but i think that pool party was close enough so then i did eyeball that color I just chose this color by eyeball method, but then I did use all the markers. I didn't use them for this project, I used them for my snowman project. I have markers in every color because I bought a set of markers. So in that case, I did take out to color the snowman, the markers, and I had every coordinating color. So look how closely Coastal Cabana matches Pool Party. Okay, so you just use whatever you have. And if you only have colored pencils to color Elfies, use, use green and red colored pencils to color your Elfies. And then you can see how they did it here. You can see how the artist did it in the, in the example in the catalog. All right, here's my eraser. So you don't want to use a red eraser to erase. You want to use one of these white erasers to erase the no peeking. And then you'll have no pencil marks. And that's what's really nice. Okay, there we go. See? No residue, no pencil marks. That's why we use, use like a white eraser. Office supply store, or it'll be linked in the description. All right, let's just color one of these. Just one, just to give you an idea how I color and how easy it is to create these projects I'm about to show you. I created these all today. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have, I, I just got this in the mail. So I didn't even have a lot of time to create these projects. And I just, I just picked out colors that go with the Let It Snow Designer Series paper, shaded spruce, and real red. And I thought, well, the Elfie needs green. So I took green and the blends come in dark and light blends. So I took green and I said, okay, green. I'm gonna put the shaded spruce dark around the hat. It's a lot easier to color when you're sitting down and you have like a TV tray and you're watching TV and you're right above something. And then I put the dark on the outside and then I put the light shaded spruce on the inside of the hat. You didn't even have to blend it. I could have just made the whole hat dark or light. It wouldn't have mattered. And whenever I get a big area, I can try to blend it. And whenever I get a small area, it's a little harder to blend. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm liking that hat. We're gonna try it again. If I mess up the hat, I can either use a, uh, well, it's only paper, number one, who cares if you mess up a hat. But it, you could use what's called the, uh, there's a name for it. It's a white marker here. It is. I already forgot the name of it. Color, it's called a color lifter and it's just plain alcohol and it sort of lifts the color off but when you have really dark colors it's hard to lift the color off I find it harder but when I have a light color like the skin tones of Elfie I'm gonna show you how you can make that lighter or darker that works with the color lifter okay so that's the hat and it'll, it'll blend better over time now let's do the face so we have we make these skin tones and when we make ivory and we make bronze, and then I have others from other companies to get more different colors of skin tones. So let's just use the ivory. But even the ivory, I thought, you know, he's a little dark for an elf, so I still used a little bit of a lifter on the, 
on this elf. But then I did it. I did other elves which are dark and light. But for because I wanted to give this one red hair, sort of a Cajun craze hair. I wanted him to have a little bit paler skin to go with his little red hair. But elves come in all shapes and sizes, so I use I did some other elves with different colors of hair, which I'll show you. Okay, so then I just used what's called Cajun craze. That's how I made his red hair, and it's sort of like a nice color you know kind of kind of an orangey color so he's already shaping up I used the lifter to make him a little bit lighter skin now I'm gonna use the real red and what I like to do is sometimes I use I use the light real red you know for this little this little part and sometimes I just use glitter on that little part and then I used to use dark real red in the inside of the stocking for the little stripes so every every alcohol blends Markers come in sets of two. You don't have to buy them in sets of two. You can just buy one. But I always buy them in sets of two, light and dark. And then I can do more more with them. So that's, now that's where I would use the color lifter because I just colored outside the lines a bit. The color lifter works better if it's dried a little bit, but. So you just use the alcohol and it kind of lifts that color. I should be using the thin side. So if you don't use the thin side, it will go outside the lines. Okay, so, so basically that's, that's about it. And then what I did is I used red for the stockings and other colors sometimes. But usually I used red and white. And then I took the glitter pen, which is called Wink of Stella, the glitter. And I would just fill in the, the parts that are white and put some glitter on them. And then my glitter got all over the place at one point today. So that was kind of fun to try to clean up. Don't squeeze this pen too hard, Wink of Stella pen. Now I'm going to lift it up so you can see better in the light how that glitter really makes a difference and makes things really pop. So I take white parts. I do this to my cows and other like any kind of Santa hats or things that have white parts. I like to add glitter to them. That color lifter's not done yet, but once it's done, I'll try to lift it again and then I add a little color. All right, so you get the idea. That's how easy it is to color. And it would be better if I had a better angle, of course. So now I'm going to show you my projects that I created with Elfie. And then I'll show you what you can get if you order something, anything, and it doesn't matter, whatever you can afford. You can, ju you can just order the tiniest little item and I will still send you a catalog sampler, a catalog if you don't already have one, and some cool things from the how, you know, uh, the actual catalog itself. All right, so here is Elfie. Woo! Started out with just making tags. So I, I was like, okay, so I'm, I made this little tag and there's the little glitter. See how the the, the hat blends together better after over time and you can see the glitter on the stocking on the white parts of the stocking see how it shines in the light I'm gonna focus that in so there it's better now you can see that so what I did for the holiday hello is I, I stamped onto whisper white cardstock using shaded spruce shaded spruce it's one of the coordinating colors I used let it snow designer series paper so it has real red stripes and the back is blueberry bushel. And then I just write where you find, you know, this is a, one of the samples that I send. And so this is real red ribbon. And so that's Elfie. That's Elfie on a tag. And this is the classic label punch. This is in our annual catalog. Classic label punch is good for cutting out the holiday hello and many, many things like that. All right, so that's how I made a tag. Oh, and by the way, I used the topper. It was called Delightful tag topper punch okay that's how I made the tags okay so there we go I'm just gonna tilt that over just so you can see that now next tag I spilled my glitter on it and when I was doing my wink of Stella and I just sort of went with it so the glitter got all over and I made it sort of I just so because I dropped a big glob of glitter I just end up putting glitter there and lots of drops of glitter all over the place to make it look like snow and I might even put some snowflake stickers on here too but I like how it shines and that's the no peeking one cut out with the scan and cut and a little present and again real red ribbon and this is let it snow designer series paper so then I started making 3d items and I have done a tutorial on YouTube on how to make these tag treats I call them tag treats so there's the little no peeking elf and there is the little stocking with the glitter on it again and I used shaded spruce cardstock and this ribbon is really cool it's frayed ribbon and it's in our holiday catalog it's called curly ribbon and it's also the real red color and I just like how it frays. 
and inside. And everyone always asks me, what do you put inside? Just right now I'm putting mints inside because the holiday candy isn't out yet, you know, for the most part. So I'm just putting little mints inside. But, you know, these hold all kinds of stuff. These little treat holders because they're like a little, they're so easy to make too. I use the delightful tag topper punch to make those. Okay, now I'm going to show you my two card projects. Saving my best card for last. <laughs> so the first card I want to show you is what I've been showing lately on YouTube. I did a tutorial on the gatefold card. So yesterday's tutorial on the snowman shows this gatefold card. So I used the Shaded Spruce Holiday Hello, a Holiday Hello, and then I used a little bit of crumb cake to ink around the edges of this to add dimension. And I added extra pieces because white on the background didn't show up. So I added extra little pieces of designer series paper and cardstock. Then I added Mr. Elfie and a little present. And then for this one, this is one of the scan and cut tricks I teach in my class. And I probably teach it on YouTube too. I always show things in my classes that I don't show on YouTube, but only different projects. I show a lot of the same techniques on YouTube as I have in my classes. So what this is, is creating an extra layer on the back when you're cutting out stamped images. So this has a 0 0.04 outline distance, but if you add a 0 .0, uh, 0.12 outline distance, you can do this extra layer, adding extra dimension using your scan and cut. Very easy to do. I know I've shown it on YouTube and I know I've showed it for sure in my class. The class is like seven hours long. I pretty much showed, showed everything in that class. Well, not everything, there's still more. I'm learning new things every day. So anyway, back to this. This is Coastal Cabana. The cardstock is Coastal Cabana. It's a coordinating color. Notice the Coastal Cabana and how it pulls in the color from the left side of this panel card or this gatefold card. And then when you open it up, it's just a piece of Whisper White cardstock with the May Your Christmas Be Merry and Full of Delight with a New Year that's happy and healthy and bright. And that was just one of the sentiments from, from the actual stamp set. And I could have actually put more panels like I did with the snowman card. I put... you more panels on the inside, but I think this card was already had enough. So then what I did is I made a belly band. So I always make a belly band for my gatefold cards. And then you bend the card, so get the belly band on there. And notice again, that's that Let It Snow Designer Series paper. You just bend the card a little bit to get the belly band to fit on there. And I did show how to make these. And again, Shaded Spruce colored the little, with the, you know, colored the little guy. Okay, so that's the Elfie card. And lastly is my Elfie. This is my favorite Elfie card. Okay, I'm gonna call this like Elfs from around the world card. <laughs> so what I did for this one is I thought, oh, I could, I could, these were all so cute, right? All these little elves. I, I cut out so many with the scan and cut. And then I started saying, well, let me just give them different skin tones and things. So how I, how I did that is using the Stampin' Up! markers, which we, we make, I just showed you the ivory. So we make, we make ivory and bronze skin tones. So we make, we make these ones, or is it these ones? We make these ones, bronze and ivory. But then I needed some more skin tones, like a yellowish. So I just found these other ones by Spectrum Noir. I think I'm saying it right. And I used these other skin tones. And it, they were called cream and ivory. So that's how I got four different skin tones. And then I did four different colors of hair. So I did like a... a Oh, maybe a crumb cake hair and a smoky slate hair, Cajun craze hair and a poppy, poppy parade hair. And then I did these alternating stripes with the pool party in red, real red, and shaded spruce in real red. And then I cut the little sign off of this guy. He was just one of the little elves that I cut out. And then I cut his little sign off to put Santa's workshop there with some little sparkle on him. And then in the inside of the card, again, just that same sentiment. And this card's made of shaded spruce. Okay, so if you use this host code, which is buried now, you could tell I'm totally not into the sales part. I'm just like, can never even show my website and my code. All I do is make a big mess on my crafting table. But anyway, if you do, then you're gonna get some, you're gonna definitely get, if you use this host code, the card I made yesterday. And here, here they are. This is on YouTube if you wanna know how to make this card. And it's called the, it's called the Snowman Season card. So I'm just going to show you one. And then at the end of this video, there'll be a link to click on the tutorial for this card. So if you want to see it, if you missed it, just click on the little video of this and you're going to see. It's going to be called Snowman Card Tutorial. That's the name of the video. Okay, so that's, that's what it looks like. And I showed everything. It was a very long tutorial, about 45 minutes. I showed everything, how to stamp all the panels, how to cut all the panels, how to cut and fold and score the card, how to color everything, how to assemble this. 
how to make the belly band, e everything. I left no stone unturned <laughs> for this tutorial. And I answered video uh, questions that I had from viewers throughout the tutorial that things that people have been asking me, even my own team members asked me to go back to basics and show how to make cards. So that's why I did. They're all pretty much, I mean, they're the same, except sometimes you have this snowman on the outside. Sometimes you have, you know, these snowmen. I used sometimes glitter foil. This is silver glitter foil. Sometimes I used blueberry bushel glitter foil. Sometimes I put these snowmen on the outside and then the same ones on the inside. But either way, all the cards are, the, you know, snowman cards. And they're uniquely different in that they all have their own little personalities when you color them. So that's, that's what you're definitely going to get if you order. And so you're going to get some other catalog samplers. Samples, I mean, maybe like one of these. Maybe you'll get a little Elfie bookmark. I won't give my messed up one away, although he has charm and character. Maybe you'll get one of these little Elfie tags. Maybe you'll get, maybe you'll get something from Birds of a Feather, my favorite stamp set in the catalog, in this catalog. Or something maybe from the moose, because I just got the moose. Who knows? Who knows what you're going to get? You're going to get a holiday catalog sampler. So I thank you for watching this Brother Scan and Cut tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, feel free to comment and share any of your favorites from the holiday catalog because that's what I'm talking about right now <laughs> in my, on my YouTube channel. That's what you're going to be seeing me do a lot of samples from. So thank you for watching. This is The Paper Chef.